Which one is better, the Arma Mojave or the Arma Fire Team? These are two of the most aggressive off-road cars Arma has to offer, and under the hood, they're both based on the same chassis, but on the outside, they look different, they're set up different, and they drive different. So today, let's check them out and go head to head to find out which one is better, the Mojave or the Fire Team. First of all, these are both 1.7 scale, ready to run with three gear differentials and four wheel drive drivetrains. They both use the same steering servo, same ESC and motor, and they're both advertised to hit 60 miles an hour. Most importantly, both of these trucks share an extra long chassis, the longest of all the 6S BLX off-road vehicles, and the main reason for their aggressive capable nature and their 1.7 scale classification. The Creighton Italian use the longest chassis within the 8 scale BLX line, but these two have almost 2 extra inches of wheelbase on this Creighton 6S BLX aligned by their rear axles. Okay, so what? Well, that extra long chassis helps spread out the weight more. So when you pull that trigger all the way, the vehicles don't want a wheelie instead, they just go. Which makes them really ideal for the hardest, most aggressive style of driving, which is why you'd want one. But which one? Now at the time of filming this, they're both the exact same price at about $670. And they're both around the same speed on 6S power. For our testing, the Mojave hit an out of the box speed of 53 miles an hour and then 62 miles an hour after switching to that included high-speed pinion gear. For the fire team, out of the box it hit 54 miles an hour and then 61 after switching to that high-speed pinion. So really the differences are coming from styling and the components to make that possible, like their bodies, their tires, their widths, and then how differently their suspensions are set up. Now obviously the Mojave is meant to be a desert truck and it uses a full-size body that covers over all the tires and wheels. This body uses an inner plastic cage for durability and an interior piece for scale realism. Although the fire team body is smaller and more compact, it's actually about 70 grams heavier than the Mojave's. I've heard a lot of people say online that they don't like the fire team body, but you can swap it out. There are some other long wheelbase bodies out there that would fit on the fire team, kind of like this Sen F250 body. And this looks pretty dang snazzy, and it's a whole lot more lightweight. How durable will it be in bashing? That's the question. The X-Max body is also a pretty close fit on the fire team, but it would require some trimming. The wheel wells don't align up perfectly, but it could be done. And if you get the Pro-Line bash body, it would be very durable. Now the fire team is about three and a half inches wider than the Mojave, pushing the suspension arms far away from the body and chassis. This means fitting other aftermarket tires and wheels a breeze without rubbing. Doing this on the Mojave though is really difficult to find a tire that fits without rubbing the body or without any trimming. The Mojave is really meant to use this special tire size where on the fire team you can pretty much use anything you want as long as that wheel has a 17 millimeter hex. Now these are one of my favorite tires. They're the backflips that come on the Outcast 6S and they're very moto-esque and they'll bolt right up on the fire team and they look pretty dang good. The stock fire team tires are not that bad either, and they're directional with an airless design to look that military part. The Mojave tires, on the other hand, are shorter and they're more narrow in comparison, intended to be more proportional for the desert truck look. The smaller tire has a big difference on weight too, coming in at about 1.3 pounds lighter per set compared to the Fire Team tires. And it's not that the Fire Team tires are extra heavy or anything, it's just that the Mojave tires are especially lightweight. Now these lighter tires and the lighter body lead to the Mojave being a lighter vehicle overall, coming in at about 11.8 pounds, compared to the Fire Team's 13.77 pounds, almost two pounds lighter on the Mojave. Now the Fire Team has one trick up its sleeve though, adding to some of that weight, and that's gonna be the handbrake feature, which uses a second auxiliary servo that's connected to a disc brake to lock up the rear end to slide it around. This is a little extra weight, but it's definitely cool and it's a lot of fun to use and it's not included on the Mojave V2. 
Now the suspension setup is crucial and it's pretty different on these two trucks. One thing to note, the Fireteam aluminum shocks have been blacked out for that Fireteam stealth operation look, where the Mojave shocks and the other little aluminum bits on there, like the hexes, are red anodized in the standard Arma color. Now in proper desert truck fashion, the Mojave shock package is too light and responsive for high speed shock movement on the terrain. So you can expect the rear end to squat and the nose to rise during hard acceleration and the nose to dive down hard when braking. Of course, this effect is more dramatic depending on the traction levels. The truck also has a good amount of roll when turning despite being equipped with sway wires. Again, more or less dramatic depending on traction. Overall though, it's fantastic to watch. It looks realistic and it gives you that desert truck feel when you drive it. From the factory, the Mojave shocks come equipped with 550 CST shock fluid front and rear, which is almost half the viscosity of the fire team shocks, which come in at 1000 CST front and rear. With the fire team suspension, it's much less quick and responsive when surface skimming, it squats and dive less during acceleration and braking, and it's overall less reactive and less reactive looking. Now the plus side to this setup is the suspension is much better suited for heavy hits and bigger drops, like jumps and landings. The Mojave can jump too, but it's gonna chassis slap a lot easier from smaller drops. It can be done, but it's just not as protected. Of course, these shocks are tunable and the oil can be changed, but this is just how they come out of the box. One last difference on these trucks is the fluid that comes included on the center differential. From the factory, the Mojave center diff comes tuned with 100,000 weight CST fluid. And then on the fire team, that center diff is tuned with 200,000 weight CST fluid. With the thicker fluid, it helps keep the drivetrain a bit more direct, more aggressive, and more four wheel drive all the time, which helps prevent the power unloading on the tires with the least amount of traction, which is what happens when the car diffs out and those tires balloon up really big. You definitely get more diffing out with the Mojave using that lighter fluid, but there are many benefits to having it. Mainly, that it provides more traction in loose and bumpy conditions, especially with that more reactionary suspension on the Mojave, and it's more true to that desert truck experience. So it's kind of a small difference, but it's a nice detail that Arma tuned, and of course the diffs can be adjusted and that fluid can be changed by the user. The front and rear diffs on the both vehicles use the same fluid, that's 10,000 weight fluid. So what truck is better? Well, they're definitely better at different things. And if you plan on driving in really rough, rocky, or chunky conditions, well then the extra width and that firmer suspension on the fire team is gonna be definitely better in those type of conditions. The fire team's big stance is also better at keeping the vehicle more stable and keeping all those tires on the ground in a greater variety of surfaces and conditions, even with high speed turning, which is where the Mojave tends to roll over. Now the Mojave on the other hand is much better at delivering a more responsive driving experience where the suspension is more responsive, the body roll is more responsive and the power delivery is also more responsive. Overall, the Mojave is just better at delivering a more realistic driving experience. This is true on the pavement, in the dirt, in mild bumpy conditions. The Mojave just feels more alive when you drive it. This also means that the Mojave demands a bit more finer inputs, more finesse coming from the driver to stay in control where the fire team does okay even if you drive it kind of sloppy. Overall, they're some of the finest seventh scale full throttle type of RC cars that you can buy. And they're based on the same platform, but they offer such different personalities. Now in summary for some pros and cons, the fire team has a bigger, wider stance. It has a firmer suspension that is a bit numb feeling compared to the Mojave. The fire team also has taller tires, which equals more ground clearance. That extra width makes it more stable, better and rougher terrain, and it accepts a greater range of tire sizes. It also has the handbrake feature, and I think overall, it's the better basher. For the cons, it's a heavier truck and it has less responsive feedback compared to the Mojave. Now for the pros on that Mojave, it's got a softer, more reactive suspension compared to the fire team. It has a more realistic body roll. It's less weight. It's a bit more precise. It looks and drives like the real thing and dang it, it has a better driver 
feedback that it gives back to you. And I think overall, it's a whole lot better at hooning around. For the cons, it's less stable in the rougher terrain because it's more narrow, it has smaller ground clearance, and it has shorter tires, and it has fewer tire size options available because of that body. Also, there's no handbrake on the Mojave, which I think would be really cool to have. Guys, go check out the Mojave and the Fire Team by following our links down below, and for more RC, check out these videos.